objective perspective in me says that uh, it would be irresponsible science to ignore the evidence for at least some kind of psi activity in the good cases of spirit mediumship. I'm going to give you one of many examples of my own experience that convinced me. I actually give messages in spiritualist churches and sometimes in public services in Lollydale, New York. Uh, that's a spiritualist community near Buffalo. But I'm chicken because I always doubt that I can do it. So I asked my spirit guide, time for you to roll your eyes. I asked my spirit guide to give me messages before I go, uh, you know, like when I, while I'm still in the bathtub. So I'll have something to say when I get there. Uh, one time I got two rather detailed messages, and I wrote them down before I went. I didn't want to, like, have my mind make this up after the fact, so I had them written down before I went. One was for the littlest girl who's not a baby and told about her skill in music and so on, and the other one was for a guy with a beard, and I could see him standing there in my mind's eye and told about how his relatives on the other side were holding signs and jumping up and down and telling him he didn't appreciate himself enough. When I got to the outdoor service, I, I could recognize the guy out of the 300 people there, and I could easily figure out who was the littlest girl who wasn't a baby. But then before I had a chance to give these messages, another spirit medium stood up and gave the exact message I was going to give to this guy, and then another medium stood up and gave the message to the little girl I was going to give, except that she said dance instead of music. I was pretty blown away. And I thought about the odds of picking the right person out of 300, times doing it a second time, like one in 90,000, times getting a detailed message right one time, times getting another detailed message almost exactly right. And remember, I had many Zinger experiences, not just this one. Okay, so what's the status of this knowledge? From the perspective of normal mainstream science, it's totally worthless. I never even gave those messages. But a researcher using a phenomenological approach could interview me and compare my subjective experiences to those of other mediums, which of course is what we did in our book. In conclusion, I'm arguing for the usefulness of phenomenological methods, but I also see that it's great to combine objective and phenomenological. Actually, Gary Schwartz does this to some extent. You can see it in his book where he, where he talks about his medium's own feelings in the afterlife experience, uh, experiments. And I, this might be a synchronicity. The day after I prepared this talk, what do you know, I got the latest issue of JSE, and what do you know, there's a phenomenological study of eight mediums by Rock, Beischel, and Gary Schwartz. I also think we should keep after the search for physical mechanisms, looking at the brain maybe as a quantum computer, setting up non-local connections between brain and mind. We need multiple methodologies for the mysterious. And if you'd like to be part of my new sociology of science study of consciousness and survival, please see my half-page ad in the program. We could at least do a short email interview. Or maybe I'll see you next year. This is going to take me years. I'm doing a documentary and a book. I love doing long projects. Thank you. Okay, we have a bit of time for questions, and uh... Dick Schaub. Um, this is great because it seems to me that so much of what is usually called consciousness um, can be explained as epiphenomena of the brain, um, and I think that, that the, the term gets bandied about way, way too much. But this really lands on things that I'm interested in, in particular the evidence for reincarnation, mediumship, several other things that just strongly suggest there's either survival or there's imprinting into the environment of someone's um, consciousness or, or living um, yes. activities, something like that. And I think rather than um, uh, explore more evidence with mediums, how much um, of your activities are trying to figure out what the mechanism might be or to parse the kinds of information that you're getting back as opposed to um, uh, validating, just validating the phenomena itself and proving that there's something real to it. I live vicariously. I'm a sociologist. <clears throat> so when I did my study of UFOs, it was actually a study of UFO researchers, 91 UFO researchers. 
And that's what I'm doing now in my recent study, is I want to study the sociology of science, how people create this knowledge about consciousness. So I'm fascinated with everything. I mean, everything from the tubercules in the, in the neurons or whatever it is, but I can't do that myself. But I'm, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to be like John Horgan and, and you know, kind of uh, a journalist of, of science by bringing all these perspectives together. It's really amazingly fascinating to see what these different people are saying about consciousness. So uh, yes, but I can't do it myself. Yes. Rosemary Pilkington here. Yes. Um, I'm so glad to see more people getting into this field, which most people here know is my favorite field to be in. Right now I'm more interested in physical phenomena, but this is the same thing. Um, asking mediums who are spiritualists, of course they're going to think that what they're getting is from spirit, but there's really no proof of that. And right. um, I don't like the term super psi. Okay. No well, one knows the extent neither does of Dean Radin. our psi abilities. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If all the things we've been hearing at this uh, conference are true, there's no limit as to time or place or whatever. So what you are getting, for instance, when you picked up these precognitions, I think they are. Could easily be. What's going on, yeah. I, know, I understand um, that. Yeah, you, you can get things clairvoyantly, precognitively, right. whatever, so it doesn't prove anything. Yeah. Um, it reminded me something you said of Eileen Garrett when she was asked, because she would go into trance and produce these fantastic uh, right. things. She would take on the personalities of people, produce uh, channel people, whatever. Right. And uh, they said, do you believe that there is an afterlife and that you're really in communication? And she said, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I believe. Yep. On Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I don't believe. And on Sunday, you know. Exactly. She's believe. one of the 122 mediums in my database, yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah, I'm actually, I'm as interested in why people think certain things is evidence for survival as I am in the question of survival. I mean, I'm interested in everything, including that. Dave Leiter here. Uh, do you use uh, meditation as part uh, of your uh, psychic uh, ability? Me? My, yes. my, my little poor little me, spirit medium? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Uh, have you ever interrupted meditation and seen what the effect is? It doesn't seem to matter very much because I can go in just like that now. Now, uh, my wife, who's really a spirit medium, I mean, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it, really. But she is uh, very serious about meditating a half hour ahead of time before she does her professional mediumship. But, you know, one of the nice things about her book is we've got, like, what percentage of people meditate? What percentage, what percentage had spirit guides who were male versus female in the 19th century compared to the 20th century? Nobody's got a database like that. But you can look for stuff like that and find out what people think about those modalities. Thank you. The um, um, evidence which is often considered most convincing for the actual existence of these people after death, sorry, Iman Sparish right Hi. here. Hi. Um, after death is that the mediums will um, behave like their personalities yes. will take on some of the characteristics. My wife and does so that. On. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you. Uh, especially any in, in China. Of oh, especially in China. They're much more likely to go into deeper trance in China. Uh, mediums don't like to do that these days, mostly in, in the United States. But yeah, oh yeah. And my wife would look at her arms. He said, look at this rash I'm getting. And the guy says, that's the rash my grandfather had. You've got it. You know? And then, uh, but she doesn't talk like people uh, or imitate other things. But she'll get feelings. Yeah. That, that, that's quite fascinating to me, yeah. Um, I know that Raymond Moody um, had people gazing in black mirrors to yes. see their departed ones. I wondered if you had done any kind of work like that We've been talked to people. We've tried that in Lilydale. There are a number of people who have done their own little psychomantiums, and we haven't gotten much. But that, I'm interested in that, too. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>